Okay, so this time Ember has decided that she wants to do a little bit of light reading. She wants us to go into a digital library, copy some requested books for her, and return them to her. And so she's given us a list, file 300, tells us what files she wants. Now it's not as simple as just grabbing file 512 and getting out of there. Uh, the way that they're stored is a little bit different. So file 512, uh, the first digit tells you which of the hosts it's currently stored on. So if it's 512, you need to go to the host that is 500 through 599, the one in the middle here. Uh, the second two digits, uh, plus 200, is the actual uh, file number. So this would be file 212 in the 500 register, or in the 500 host. Uh, so what you can do, is, and one thing that took me a second to realize was that uh, if I want to move from like the 100 to the 200, I was confused because there wasn't any labels on the bridge here. Uh, it is 800 to go forward through this. So to go from one to two to three to four, it's 800 each time and to go backward, it's minus one. That's what this down here is telling you, but not particularly like explicitly. You would kind of have to, to figure that out. Uh, so like 512 is stored in the 500 block in file 212. 896 is in the 800 block file 296. Get it? Uh, so how are we going to grab each of these files? Um, XA is going to be the manager. He's going to take care of everything. He is going to grab the 300, the file 300, and is going to basically deploy an agent that's going to go and find each one of these books. So he's going to make five total agents to go after each of the five books. Uh, so he's going to grab it and he's going to head over here just so that they all don't also have to make that jump. And then he's going to do something called mode. I don't think this is something we ha we've done yet. So whenever we're communicating over the M register, it's been global. Anybody that's listening on the M register anywhere can read or write to the M register. But there's also a local version of the M register. With the local version, you can only communicate with execution agents that are in the same host. So if there's, if I'm in the local version of M and there's an execution agent also in this gateway, this gateway host down here with me, I can communicate them locally over the M register. But if they move over into the 100 and they're still local, I cannot communicate with them. If I try and write on the M register and they try to read, it'll never communicate because they're not in the same host. Local means you can only communicate over this, over like in the same host. Additionally, a execution agent that is local cannot communicate with an execution agent that is global, even if they are in the same host with each other. They have to either both be local or and in the same host or both be global. Those are the only two options. So this job is a continuation of learning how to use Swizz as well as learning the importance of local M register writing. One of the most important things that they're going to tell us here is that Ember will never request more than one book in the same host. That's because we're going to have a, a group of agents in each of these blocks here. Uh, one of them is going to be reading the contents of a book and the other one's going to be writing it down. They, eat, they all need to be communicating with each other, but if we only have access to a global M register, there's going to be miscommunication because they're all going to be trying to read and write different things. It's all going to be combo like, combobulated and combined and messed up. But if everybody is locally communicating, then only people that are in the 100 block are going to be able to communicate with people and hear people that are in the 100 block. So. What happens is we're going to set the mode on execution agent A to local. So you'll see global is going to turn to local. And anytime you replicate, uh, just like how the registers are copied, it will also replicate your execution agent in the same mode. So if you're in local when you replicate it, the replicated agent will also be local. That is an important note and very important. So. Execution agent's going to be in local. There's only local communication in this job. There's going to be no global communication. Uh, they're going to copy 512 into their X. They're going to use Swizz and move it into the T register. This is going to be setting up for my beautiful uh, T looping trick from earlier. And then we're also going to Swizz out the, the hundreds place digit because we don't need it anymore and we want to add 200 into it. So that's going to give us our file number. So Swizzing out 
Uh, we only want the first two digits, so we're going to get rid of the five. We're going to turn 512 to just 12, and we're going to add 200. Now we have the file number in X, and we have how many times we're going to have to jump across 800 to reach the block we want. Because if we want to get to block five, we got to do one, two, three, four, five to get there. And then we're going to, now that we've got those two values, we'll replicate a seeker. The seeker is going to head on in there while execution agent A is going to see, do I still need to make more seekers? If not, uh, then I will wipe the file and halt. But otherwise, he's just going to keep deploying agents, one for each book. So let's follow XA0 now. He's going to jump along until he gets to 500. You'll see these other agents are going around grabbing the other books. This one's going to head over to the 800 block. But we're going to focus on XA0. XA0 knows that he's in the 500 block now because he's done his T, his T loop trick here. And now he's going to clone himself a writer. This person is going to be in charge of making a new file that's got the contents of the book because you'll notice all of the files here have locks on them, which means they can't be taken out of their host. I can't just take the book and bring it back. I need to make a copy of it. And there's no easy way to do it, so we have to, to transfer each word in the file across. So uh, XA0 has created XA00. He's the writer. Uh, XA0 is going to grab the file we want because that was saved in their X register. And he is going to copy uh, in local mode the contents of the file over to XA0. XA0 is the writer. He is just going to copy the word. So the first thing that gets transferred over is 512. That's just, uh, I think, the ID of the, of the book. And the next thing that XA0 is going to do is XA0 is going to communicate or he's going to test, have I finished reading the file? Definitely not, because we just started. Let's see, where's XA0? The, the clicking on them is very nice. Uh, am I at the end of the file? And I'm going to just copy that value over to XA0 as well, because he needs to know when we're done transcribing the book too. Uh, XA0 is going to say, okay, we're, we're not done. I have more to send to you. So I'm just going to keep sending words. You can see XA0 sending contents and statuses over to XA0. And it's kind of nice to see once all of them have been deployed, you see them all communicating with each other. Uh, and so XA0 is going to keep going until we've reached the end of the file. So let's go Let's go to here on, on XA0, not XA1. Let's go to here. All right, so XA0 has reached the end of the file. He has communicated to XA00 that, hey, I just finished with the file. I'm gonna, I'm done. XA0 is done, so he's gonna halt. XA00 is, needs to head back. So what he's going to do is he's going to basically just keep linking to minus one forever, which will bring him all the way out of this, uh, like the library here until he ends up here back in our host. And then he's going to try linking minus one again. And he's just going to terminate. He's going to error out because that link doesn't exist. So that's basically just reeling him back in until he errors himself out. So you'll watch. He's working his way back. And then when he gets here, he's going to try and link minus one again. He's going to crash because uh, link ID not found. And when he cr when he finishes, he drops his file. All of our other little friends here are going to do the exact same thing. They're going to finish transcribing their files and then get reeled back in until the whole book contents have been brought back, dropped, test run complete. We've got the books that Ember has requested, and that will continue for all of these. So this was a good job for teaching you, uh, like reinforcing Swizz in order to, to figure out where each book is and what file it's in, and then learning how to use local communication because doing that uh, with global communication would basically require only being able to do one book at a time, which is how you end up with uh, the cycles being way up here on the graph because you, you want to be able to do this synchronously. You don't want to have to do this uh, one after another. It'll take much longer. But there you have it.